Welcome to the Warrior 1 to 90 leveling skills guide. In this guide, we'll cover all of your skills as you train to wanna know where is the caveman better than the rest of them, but also hopefully kill your enemies along the way. Watch as you go from this to this. This series is framed in the mindset of players completely new to Final Fantasy XIV or the MMO genre in general, or generally still inexperienced. In that same vein, this will merely be an overview of the actions and how to use them. Optimal rotations are better left to their own in-depth videos just due to how much complexity is involved in perfect openers and overall rotations. This is not meant to be a purely optimal guide. If you wish to be optimal at level cap, there are further places you can research your job on. We will, however, be crafting rotations as we go to help new players understand what goes through creating openers and give them a foothold to push themselves into being able to do it on their own. The goal is to drop players in on the ground level so they can make strides to improve themselves. All tooltips will be shown at the level cap for each section. Level 50 for A Realm Reborn, Level 60 for Heavensward Skills, Level 70 for Stormblood Stuff, Level 80 for Shadowbringers Levels, and Level 90 for Endwalker. I also recommend all players add Sprint and Limit Break to their hotbars, both found in the General tab of your Actions menu. And as for how my hotbars build, it'll make sense at 90. Just put skills on your hotbars in a way you feel comfortable using as you're leveling. Everyone has their own way of doing things. If you want more info on how I set up my UI, check the description or the card for a video on it. And keep the following in mind, patches can change jobs still. Be sure to check the description for any patch notes, for minor potency changes or skill changes, or any other special notes. With all that out of the way, let's begin. Warrior being a caveman is only partially a joke, as most people consider it the easiest of the tanks. Simple rotation, literally powered by anger, and some extremely strong abilities. Focus mostly on windows of big critical hits and hitting very few buttons to achieve this burst of damage. Putting out damage is very much the most simple of any tank. The abilities Warrior brings are strong and have a bit of flexibility. Party shields and some extremely strong healing for yourself. You don't have much in helping out the party, but what you do have is very strong. Simple again, and straightforward like the rest of the job. Local man too angry to die. To play a Marauder, you either start as one, or pick the class up in the Limso Lumensa Marauders Guild after completion of your level 10 class quest as your first class. Let's get into the finer details of each skill. Level 1, Tank Mastery. This is a passive trait all tanks have. You have an automatic, 20% reduction to all damage received. This really puts the tank in tank. The maximum HP bit means you have the most HP of any roll with vitality being worth a bit extra. And the strength bit? I don't get why that is there because as the tank is still doing less damage than any DPS, and it's kind of self-explanatory. Otherwise... Level 1, Heavy Swing. This is our first basic strike and global cooldown. It does a simple 150 potency hit to a single target. Keep hitting enemies till they die. Level 4, Maim. This is our first combo hit. It does 100 potency of damage, or 250 when used in a combo. Going forward, I will only mention the combo potencies because you should never use combos out of order. Combos also light up when executable, like this. So by nature of being a combo, this is always going to come after Heavy Swing. We're going to alternate these back and forth constantly. Heavy Swing, Maim, Repeat Forever. Well, until we get more skills. Level 6, Berserk. On a 60 second cooldown, Berserk gives you three stacks of itself. This causes the next three weapon skills you do to be critical direct hits, or as strong as an attack can be with both statuses stacking. Our goal with this is to buff the three best attacks we can, which we don't really have much to do with right now. Use this after a heavy swing, and then you will buff two maims and a heavy swing. Later on, we're going to change up how this is used several times, so be wary of that. But otherwise, three attacks will be super buffed. Just don't for some reason use it when you aren't attacking. There's a 15 second time limit to use the three stacks you are given, so you can't just pop it way ahead of time and then get to it later. We get the first of our roll actions here at level 8 with Rampart. These skills are extremely important as a tank, even your most important buttons. Put these on your bars and get to know them well, but I will not be going over them here. There will be a link in the corner and in the description for a dedicated video on these skills. Do look at it if you need. Level 10, Overpower. This is our first AoE, Area of Effect, attack. 
and it's one they ruined! This used to be a very useful, very superior to other tank AoEs, Cone. Now it's a 5 yam AoE in a circle around you. You have to aim yourself to the middle of enemies to hit. If you pull a bunch of enemies, you may need to get really close just to hit them all. When you run up to a group of enemies, two or more, hit overpower to deal damage and get enmity established. We're gonna talk more about this more in the next skill, but enmity is your ultimate goal. The damage is strong, but this is a key tool for making sure trash packs stay on you rather than your allies. At this point, even on two enemies, this is stronger than single target attacks, but I recommend using AoE on three or more enemies beyond the initial pulling. Overpower when you pull to establish aggro, then swap targets back and forth while doing single target attacks. And finally, use Berserk for AoE. Every enemy hit will take the critical direct hit damage, not just the first enemy or anything. Five enemies around you, all five enemies will take the full Berserk damage. Level 10, Defiance. Technically on a three second cooldown, this turns on and off your enmity stands. Defiance massively increases your ability to generate enmity, how much enemies want to kill you and thus not attack your allies. It's something like a 10 times multiplier, it comes with a UI element, this small gem. If it is glowing, it is on, and you always want to have this on. You want to keep all enemies on you at all times, with the only exceptions in 8 player or larger content. Your party list comes with an enmity gauge. When targeting an enemy, that enemy's enmity will be measured under every ally's icon. You want to be in the lead with an A. If you look at the enemy list, they have colored indicators too. You want the red square. If it looks like anything else, you do not have the enmity lead. As mentioned, exceptions come into play with 8 player or larger content. These instances come with multiple tanks, 2 to 3 of them depending on the content. Fighting for the enmity lead with the other tank is an extremely bad idea that can potentially get allies killed. Only one of you will be in charge of the boss. The other is in charge of picking up adds, additional enemies, or the boss when the other tank dies or is otherwise not able to tank. General idea is, whoever puts on the enmity stance on first when entering a duty is in charge of the boss. Every tank has their own version of Defiance. Same effect, but name and icon differ. You'll get used to the icons and animations as you progress, but it's a rule you can follow. Or you could go based on who has more gear and HP, but best choice? is to use your words and type it out. Controller uses on PlayStation, buy a cheap $5 USB keyboard. Worth it. Beyond who is currently tanking, you want to be ready to immediately assume tanking duties if the other tank dies. A minute or so into a fight, turn on Defiance, even when you are the designated off tank. This guarantees that you are in the second place in enmity above your DPS and healer allies. The moment the other tank dies, the boss will hit you instead of your easy to murder teammates. Make sure you quickly move into position 2, since you want the boss to face away. The other worry is with level sync. If you are, say, level 50 and go into a duty below level 50 with Defiance active, it will deactivate. You must always make sure Defiance is on when you need it. It must be stressed, be ready to hit the button every single time you enter a duty. This is especially needed in dungeons as the only tank around. Ultimately though, Simply turn it on, then hit enemies hard to make them eat your face. Our next roll actions are Low Blow at level 12 and Provoke at level 15. Level 15, Tomahawk. This skill is not automatically obtained. You must do your class quest for it. Please, especially being a tank, do your class and job quests. These skills are all extremely important. I won't be mentioning this further, but there is an indication in the top left corner when a skill is a quest locked skill. Please do them. For Tomahawk, this is an engagement and positioning tool. Within 20 yams away, you can throw your axe at enemies for a 150 potency hit and a further enmity multiplier, ensuring whatever you hit near guaranteed is targeting you only. You can use this if you lose aggro on a target, for positioning new targets, or for getting a far away target that is still relevant. I like using Tomahawk for starting battle. It drags the enemies towards you as you run toward them. This lets you get into actual fighting sooner, and grab aggro sooner. And for bosses, this lets you move a boss sitting at the edge of an arena into the middle of it, a place bosses usually want to be. 
For a specific non-boss example, let's take some trigger-happy black mage that goes full DPS on a single enemy before the pool has even finished. You can tomahawk that one enemy without running after the black mage, though ideally they will run to you anyway. Outside of this though, you don't get a lot of use of tomahawk. It's single target and weaker than doing normal combos. The range is also not ideal. The tank should not be running out of range of the enemies they are fighting, unless the mechanic explicitly forces you to, such as a large AoE around the boss. When it does force you out of range, you are not out of range for long, running immediately back in. And later we get an option for quickly making it back into range without needing to tomahawk. Good news is, anytime you do need to use tomahawk, it does not break combos. But if your enmity is already quite the lead, your effect on the battle is minimal. Roll actions once again come in here with Interject at level 18 and Reprisal at level 22. Level 26, Storm's Path. This is the third hit of our combo and why we only AoE on three enemies or more. This does a whopping 380 potency to a target. This is way higher than our other hits. It's a good damage boost, but additionally, it's a form of mitigation or reduction of damage. When finishing your combo, you heal yourself for a 250 potency heal. This only happens every three attacks, and you won't be using it in trash mobs, but on single targets, this is a decent bit of healing. Level 30, Thrill of Battle. On a 90 second cooldown, Thrill will increase your maximum HP by 20%. This will automatically heal you for the amount of that increase, so you don't need to be healed afterwards to make use of that increased HP. It lasts for 10 seconds before dropping your max HP back to normal. This is a cooldown for when you're about to take a big hit usually, tank busters that do tons of damage. You'll need to capitalize on it after the hit, but reduces just how much healing you need. Missing 20% of your HP after a heal essentially means nothing once the cooldown wears off. Unfortunately, the use of the skill in this way won't happen until at least about I'd say level 50. In a pinch, you can use the skill for specifically for healing. If you're somehow super low on health and your healer seems to be struggling, you can blow it just for the 20% HP of healing. Survival is ultimately the key, even if you're only using half of the effect. Outside of bosses, this tends to be the only real way to use it anyway, since trash is more about consistent damage rather than big hits. To obtain the warrior job, you must first reach level 30 and complete the level 30 Marauder quest. Additionally, complete the main scenario quest, Self-Management, which is at level 20 in the story. Return to the guild and your quest should be there for you. Level 32 is the roll action of Arm's Length. This is a defensive cooldown, by the way. Please check that video if you don't believe me. Level 35, the Beast Within and Inner Beast. Our little gem has now expanded into a full bar, and when using Defiance, rather than glowing, we get some sick horns. Rock on, dude. This gauge is generated any time we use Mame and Storm's Path. Mame is 10 gauge every use, and Storm's Path is 20 every use. So one full combo is 30 gauge every time. At 50 gauge, this allows us for one use of our new skill, Inner Beast. This does 330 potency of damage to a single target for spending the gauge. Simply put, dump your gauge on bosses when you get enough. It's not quite as big a hit as Storm's Path, but has no combo requirements. Hit enemies, hit hard with Inner Beast. There is one other thing you could do though, and that's combine it with Berserk when it comes off of cooldown. If you have Gauge, hit Berserk, then spend your Beast Gauge to make Inner Beast hit way harder. And this is something we can take into account with openers. Let's build a sort of an opener now. We have very little to work with, but our openers don't get overly complex even at 90, so we might as well start now. Pre-pull, Defiance if relevant. Tomahawk, Heavy Swing, Maim, Storm's Path, Heavy Swing, Berserk, Maim, Storm's Path, Inner Beast. The only thing this opener is doing is getting enough gauge to buff one Inner Beast and the two strongest hits of our combo. The second combo will give us a total of 60 gauge, enough for one use of Inner Beast. So popping Berserk before Maim buffs two hits of the combo, and the inner beast we get at the end. The only other note is that there may or may not also be a tomahawk before this to pull the boss into position. Positioning is always very important. 
Otherwise, extremely simple. Very fitting for Warrior, so let's just move on from there. Level 38, Vengeance. On a long 2 minute cooldown, Vengeance reduces all damage by 30% for 15 seconds. This is a very big defensive buff. This makes it an extremely good anti-tank buster skill, handling most tank busters up to, and sometimes including, endgame rating by itself. Though we'll have skills to easily pair with it. On top of this though, Warrior continues to be unique with this also being an attack. Any physical hit you take causes the enemy to take spike damage, taking 55 potency of damage. On bosses, this is there, but not that significant overall. In trash pulls where there's 5, 6, 10 enemies? Assuming they're all physical, that's a lot of damage for every cycle of attacks you take. And since trash mobs are going to be doing a lot of damage in large groups, you're able to survive it while doing damage back. Trash is more dangerous than bosses, and this skill is the perfect counter. But again, get used to using it for bosses too. Level 40, Mithril Tempest. Our AoE now has a combo. Overpower combos into Mithril Tempest, which is the same size and shape for an AoE. The effects are much stronger though. It does a 150 potency hit to all enemies within range. Then it grants a buff, Surging Tempest. This increases all damage you deal by 10% for 30 seconds. This buff can be stacked to a maximum of 60 seconds. Because of this, your AoE is stronger in two ways. Your combo boosts the average hit you do, then all attacks you do after even a single AoE combo are 10% stronger. When you're down to one or two enemies, you can swap to your single target attacks to finish them off, with those still being buffed. This is not something you need to use in boss fights unless there are adds that warrant AoE. The buff is not worth ignoring your single target to apply, and we'll have a single target way of doing it soon. Level 42, Home Gang. So, this is an interesting one. This is Warrior's ultimate, or invuln skill. It has a lengthy 4 minute cooldown, which is short for ultimates. For 10 seconds, you cannot die, with some exceptions able to kill you, which usually means boss mechanics and raiding. Otherwise, your HP will hit 1 and never drop to 0. In high-end raiding, this is a god tier skill. The short cooldown allows you to screw over a lot of tank busters and such, and because it has a 10 second timer, there's a lot of leeway for healing up, or even possibly getting two busters in if they're back to back. In dungeons, this is just meh. The 10 second timer makes it nice for forcing safety, but it's not something you're gonna actively use like other tank ultimates. It's an emergency button at best and not even the greatest at it. If your healer recovers, you didn't even need it. If you didn't need it, you may hit it too late anyway. Being literally too angry to die is great, don't get me wrong, but proper usage in normal content is hard especially when we add in the final drawback. When you home gang, you target an enemy and bind them in place. And if the binded enemy dies, home gang ends. So you want to target the healthiest enemy, untarget enemies when you hit home gang, or make a macro so that you target yourself. All three are options, but to maximize the usage later, and this gets some amazing usage later, you're going to want to make sure you can quickly use it without the enemy dying mid-timer. Level 45, Steel Cyclone. So, uh, there's some problems with this one. This is the AoE version of Inner Beast, costing 50 gauge. This does another circle AoE around you, dealing 170 potency of damage to all enemies hit. Overpower and Mithril Tempest do not generate gauge. The only way to generate gauge will be single target combos and skills we get later. All this does is encourage you to hold on to your gauge instead of using it. That's something we don't even want to really consider. We'll have a little bit of a fix for this in a few levels, but it's not a perfect solution. Generally though, if you have 50 gauge in a trash pool, use Steel Cyclone to do some extra damage. Our final roll action for tanking is Shirk at level 48. Level 50, Storm's Eye. This is a second combo off of MAME. Storm's Eye has the same power as Storm's Path, dealing 380 potency of damage. The differences are threefold. 1. It has no attached heal. 2. Beast Gauge only increases by 10, not 20. These two issues sound damning, but the third difference, Storm's Eye applies Surging Tempest. 
This is the same buff as Mithril Tempest gives, buffing all of our damage by 10%. And just like Mithril Tempest, you can stack it up to 60 seconds. The difference is you do not want to overcap this timer. If your timer is below 30 seconds, you are safe to reapply the buff to increase your timer. If your timer is over 30 seconds, stick to Storm's Path for more gauge. But otherwise, you want to maintain this buff to the end of a boss encounter. If the buff wears off one to two attacks before a boss ends, that's fine. If you are going through several full combos without the buff, that's not good. So generally, just keep your buff running and then hit the enemies hard. Level 50, Infuriate. This is our first skill with charges. Charges means you can store multiple usage. The moment you use a charge, the cooldown will begin to obtain a new charge and still let you use the other stored charges. Infuriate has a 60 second charge timer, or two minutes in total. It can also not be used outside of combat. Combat must begin before you hit Infuriate. What this does is immediately give us 50 Beast Gauge. This is what I was talking about during Steel Cyclone. After beginning combat in trash pools, immediately hit Infuriate to give yourself some gauge. Once initial aggro generation is done, spend it on Steel Cyclone for some extra damage. You ideally want to also combo this in with Berserk. This is a free, guaranteed use of your B skills every 60 seconds, combined with 60 second Berserk. You buff those strong hits further. It doesn't completely work out though, since any future Berserks will only get one Infuriate for a combo. But this is info that is key for our openers through all the levels. We want to use our Infuriates as soon as possible to get the cooldown running, and to do as much damage quick to enemies as we can. Pre-pull, Defiance if relevant. Tomahawk. Infuriate. Heavy Swing. Maim. Storm's Eye. Heavy Swing. Maim. Berserk. Storm's Path. Inner Beast. Inner Beast. Infuriate. Inner Beast. Reminder, Tomahawk may be needed for positioning, but immediately after pulling, we hit Infuriate. All it does is give us gauge, so no reason not to immediately pop one. The first Storm's Path can now be Storm's Eye to get our buff rolling. Then we keep going through to our second Mame. We move Berserk back behind Mame because with Infuriate we can prioritize buffing our strongest attacks, those being Storm's and Inner Beast. Storm's Path is stronger than Inner Beast, so we still want that inside of Berserk, popping it before that third hit. We also aren't overcapping Gauge since Storm's Path and Storm's Eye combos combine to 50 Gauge exactly. So our first stack of Berserk buffs our biggest hit, then we can Inner Beast back to back. Then finally we have another Infuriate, throw that out for one last big hit. Openers are all about front loading damage anyway, and this becomes ever more relevant as we level up. And so that gives us our first major opener. This is going to change a lot, but there's some very similar elements across all of the openers, so let's put it into a karaoke. I'll be naming the skills as I use them, saying the names the moment the game registers their use. This can cause some overlapping in names. The important part is when the name begins, though. Pre-pull. Defiance if relevant. Tomahawk. Infuriate. Heavy Swing. Maim. Storm's Eye. Heavy Swing. Maim. Berserk. Storm's Path. Inner Beast. Inner Beast. Infuriate. Inner Beast. But that's Warrior's Beginnings. This isn't all that much to start, but what we have is pretty good. But in Heaven's Word, we will become a very angry god. Level 54, Inner Beast Mastery and Felcleave. Inner Beast has upgraded into what many players consider to be Warrior's signature move. Felcleave is taking a chainsaw to the face of the enemies. It has a much higher 460 potency to a single target. Other than the animation and power, it's the same thing as in a beast. Felcleave go burr. Level 56, Raw Intuition. Congrats, you are now a literal god. I'm not even joking. Every 25 seconds, this will reduce 10% of damage for 6 seconds. 
This effect is nice, but outside of bosses, isn't going to be much we care about. What we care more about is that you also get a 400 potency heal for every hit you do with weapon skills. This is for every hit, which means if there are 10 enemies and you use overpower, that's a 4,000 potency heal for a single hit. And 6 seconds is enough to get 3 hits in, or 12,000 potency of healing. This is, without question, literally White Mage's Benediction on a 25 second cooldown. In any trash pack, you can use this to instantly heal to max. That isn't the end of it. Let's bring up Home Gang again. 10 seconds of being unable to die. Before pull, tell your healer not to heal you. Get low on HP, pop Home Gang, hit 1 HP, wait till Home Gang has 2 seconds left, hit Raw Intuition, then heal yourself back up to max. This turns Home Gang from the worst tank ultimate for dungeon content into the best one, all because you can use the full timer and have complete control of your health bar. Just remember about not having a target for Home Gang, lest you accidentally lose it prematurely. Besides, in content at this level, you won't really get much use of this tactic anyway, and will just not use the Home Gang trick. If it isn't specifically a further leveling dungeon, or your team has low DPS, things tend to die too fast. You'll make the most of your self heals by intentionally letting yourself get low, but only in later level content when enemies start hitting hard will you do much home gang abuse. And again, 10% damage mitigation is nice, but it's more a means to an end for bosses that have higher damage. This makes for a great skill to partner with anything for tank busters, such as Vengeance with Raw Intuition. Otherwise though, this is your strongest skill basically forever. Level 58, Equilibrium. Doubling down immediately with Warrior being a healing tank is Equilibrium. On a short 60 second cooldown, this will instantly heal you for 1200 potency of healing. At this level, that's nearly half of your HP. Once again, you can purposefully let yourself get low, pop Equilibrium, and be back to normal HP values. And it can crit, doing closer to 70% of your health. At later levels, healing does become less effective overall, so it becomes more like a quarter of your HP at 90. As you level up, be ready to be even more proactive with Equilibrium since it isn't as insane. Keep an eye on the relative amount it heals and once it starts to fall lower, you know to react to this. That's an issue you never see with Raw Intuition though, since you'll be pulling so many enemies with a second mitigation running for it to not matter. Level 60, Steel Cyclone Mastery and Decimate. This is the same thing as Felcleave, but for Steel Cyclone. It has now become Decimate which does 200 potency of damage to all enemies in range. The same issue applies though, as you can't guarantee gauge in trash pulls outside of Infuriate. So unless you come out of a boss with some gauge and Infuriates, you won't see much of it. But then that's it for Heaven's Word. Some minor offensive upgrades with some massive defensive abilities. You have become the heal tank and it feels so good. But we have further to improve with Stormblood. Level 62, Onslaught. This is a skill with charges, two of them. The charge time is a lowly 30 seconds. Onslaught has two effects. The first is a basic 150 potency of damage. Free damage, use it on cooldown. The second is that you rush the target. This means this is a gap closer. You immediately rush to the enemy as long as they are within the 20 yom range this skill has. This has some extremely good uses with dodging attacks. If you need to run out of range of an enemy, you can onslaught back in to lose no uptime. There's other such uses similar to this, like quickly moving to another enemy in cases with multiple bosses. What you do not use this for is pulling. Please do not pull with this. I say again, positioning of bosses is extremely important. This makes it harder to position right, it can also catch your team off guard and unprepared for the pull because you just zoomed in with no animation. Which if your goal is pulling so quick is speed of the run, well you just achieve the opposite. Just keep the gap closing in mind. You may want to hold on to one of your charges during certain bosses. If you know for sure you're going to be out of range due to mechanics, 
You can hold on to one charge just for speeding back in when it is safe. Level 64, Upheaval. On a 60 second cooldown, Upheaval does 350 potency of damage to a target. Use this on cooldown. It has a high potency and very short cooldown, so this ends up being worth a lot of damage, even in AoE. Just get used to throwing this out anytime you can. Not the most interesting skill, but it does give you a time to track constantly. Level 66, Enhanced Infuriate. This less buffs Infuriate and more buffs Felcleave and Decimate. Using either of these skills will reduce the cooldown of Infuriate by 5 seconds. This adds up extremely quickly. Keep in mind, we used 3 inner beasts even in our level 50 opener, which would be 15 seconds of free cooldown time. Across an entire dungeon, or even just trial, that's a lot of extra Infuriates becoming a lot of extra Felcleaves. Level 68, Shake It Off. On a 90 second cooldown, Shake It Off places a shield on yourself and all allies within 15 yams with 15% of each individual's max HP. This is great for yourself in trash, but really good for blocking raid-wide damage in boss fights. Your entire team will take 15% of their HP less damage for each of them. That's the main use, being anti-raid-wide. There's a further effect, boosting the shield by 2% for each defensive buff you have going of Thrill of Battle, Vengeance, and raw intuition. This actually is often a very bad thing. You're going to need some decent planning to make use of this. There is a tank buster followed by a raid wide damage for example. Use vengeance and raw intuition to block the tank buster, then immediately you shake it off for a 19% shield. Sounds pretty good still, but what about trash mobs? Shake it off is 15% worth of damage you can ignore, so you'll want to use this during trash pulls just to help yourself and you heal it to an extent. But if you use it after, say, putting up Vengeance, you lose your 30% mitigation for only 2% HP worth of shields. This is not worth it, except if Vengeance was about to fall off anyway. So you're either paying extreme attention to your timing, or you need to use Shake It Off before your mitigations. So be careful of your cooldown ordering with this. It's an extremely useful skill that can end up making things worse for you if used at the wrong time. Level 70, Berserk Mastery and Inner Release. Berserk is getting a big upgrade into Inner Release. The cooldown remains 60 seconds and you get a ton of extra buffs. You are guaranteed three Inner Release stacks. These allow you to use Fell Cleave and Decimate for free, even if you have zero gauge. Further, these are guaranteed critical direct hits still. You don't need to do the wind-up or the infuriate usage. This is essentially 150 free beast gauge. On top of this, inner strength is granted, nullifying most crowd control and knockback effects. This is a very niche effect, nothing you will ever intentionally use. If it happens to line up, great. Finally, Surging Tempest is increased by 10 seconds for free so your buff is maintained a little bit easier. Now, unlike Berserk, we can use this ahead of time. All other attacks do not have any effect on our inner release stacks, but you still only have 15 seconds of time to use your stacks, so there's a very fine line to walk. One that openers will be really pushing up against, especially with the level 90 toolkit. But given that this is a free 150 gauge, we can finally get a lot of AoE usage. Decimate will get at least three uses, plus Infuriate. You can hit Infuriate to start the cooldown, hit in release, do four Decimates, hit Infuriate again, do a fifth Decimate, and have your next Infuriate cooldown 25 seconds reduced, plus the time needed to execute all of this. And since you'll be grouping enemies together, you'll have put up Surging Tempest too. That's a lot of AoE damage. But simply, take in a release, do three big hits, enjoy the dopamine. But then comes our next opener. In release alone is a huge change to the opener, but we also have to fit in all the new off globals we have with upheaval and two onslaughts. So let's bring it all together. Pre-pull, Defiance if relevant, Tomahawk, Infuriate, Heavy Swing, Maim, Storm's Eye, Inner Release, Felcleave, Upheaval, Onslaught, Fell Cleave, Onslaught, Fell Cleave, Fell Cleave, 
Infuriate, Felcleave. Same as before, we open with Tomahawk into Infuriate. We'll put up our Surging Tempest buff, then pop in a release. This specific timing is preparation for later levels. At this level, you can technically use it earlier, but muscle memory is nice. From there, we're gonna throw out everything with our buffs going, and everyone else's party buffs going. Spam Felcleave to spend in a release and your gauge from Infuriate. In between, throw out upheavals and onslaughts to get the free damage. But remember, you can save one of the onslaughts if there's an upcoming knockback or disengagement you want to negate with onslaught. Once you get to the fourth Felcleave, you will spin the gauge from the first Infuriate finally. Use your second charge and use Felcleave again. This finishes up what we have. From there, we just do basic combos, use gauge when we have it, and Infuriate for extra gauge. That's all there is to it with Warrior. Buff up and go angry. This anger won't translate to the karaoke opener, but we can still go through it. Pre-pull, Defiance, if relevant. Tomahawk, Infuriate, Heavy Swing, Maim, Storm's Eye, in release. Fell Cleave, Upheaval, Onslaught, Fell Cleave, Onslaught, Fell Cleave, Fell Cleave, Infuriate, Fell Cleave. And now on to Shadowbringers. Once again, some major shifts in what we get for our toolkit, though not quite as notable. Level 72, Nation Chaos and Chaotic Cyclone. First off, Infuriate has been given a buff. Usage at all will grant you Nation Chaos for 30 seconds. This will upgrade Decimate into Chaotic Cyclone for one use. And funnily gives us a preview that at level 80, Felcleave is turned into Inner Chaos. Chaotic Cyclone is a very interesting skill. It is, just like in a release, a guaranteed critical direct hit. It deals 320 potency to all targets on top of the auto direct crit. This still reduces the Infuriate timer by 5 seconds, despite only being granted by Infuriate. And because it is already an auto crit, Chaotic Cyclone does not spend a use of inner release, spending the 50 gained beast gauge instead. This is very important info. But Otherwise, Infury just now gives us very powerful AoE hits. Level 74, Mastering the Beast. Finally our AoE can give us Beast Gauge. Every use of Mithril Tempest will grant 20 gauge, meaning every three combos is one decimate, or five full combos for two. But by now you get how using gauge works from using it on Felcleave. Just get used to being able to use it a lot in AoE now. Level 76, Enhance Shake It Off. Shake It Off now comes with a small heal for all allies affected. It heals 300 potency on contact. This isn't something you'll much use to any major effect. This will help healers top everyone off for the next raid-wide damage the party takes, and if anyone is missing HP, it won't be a lot of missing HP. But again, a top off is good. If the healer isn't healing everyone up, well, maybe it will be of more use. 300 potency plus the shield. Level 76, Nascent Flash. This skill is ridiculous. First off, you must choose a target. Normally, you will choose your co-tank when they are the main tank. Secondly, you yourself get Nascent Flash, while your ally gets Nascent Glint for 6 seconds each. Nascent Flash is just the healing part of raw intuition. 400 potency of healing for yourself for every strike. Nascent Glint is just raw intuition for your ally. You are still the one that needs to attack since Glint heals using the HP healed from Nation Flash, but it's just like you're giving raw intuition to an ally while still healing yourself in the process. Again, if you have a co-tank and they are taking damage, give them Nation Flash on cooldown. This heals them and protects them from damage while still helping yourself. You can even potentially macro this to always target the co-tank, though always beware with macros being as terrible as they are. There is one downside though. Raw Intuition and Nation Flash share a cooldown. If you use one, both go on cooldown. But given what Nation Flash is used for, this downside barely exists. Level 78, Enhanced Thrill of Battle. Thrill of Battle now has an extra effect. Your healers can now take better advantage of this buff. 
Anytime you use it, healing actions will do 20% more healing. For those 10 seconds, any heals are just outright better. This makes using Equilibrium better, but not raw intuition. Like, say you take a Tank Buster with Thrill up. After taking the hit, pop Equilibrium. It will heal you and heal 20% more thanks to Thrill. If you don't have Equilibrium, well, the healer can heal you up themselves with less effort needed thanks to that extra 20%. Level 80, Inner Chaos. As we saw at 72, using Infuriate will grant us Nation Chaos, which allows us to use Chaotic Cyclone. And now at 80, Inner Chaos. Inner Chaos is a massive 650 potency hit on a target, reduces Infuriate by 5 seconds, and is a guaranteed critical direct hit. It has the same interactions too. Inner Chaos cannot use stacks of Inner Release. If both are running, Inner Chaos will take priority and spend 50 gauge. And a reminder, Nation Chaos is spent after just one skill use. Otherwise, the use of this is obvious. Hit Infuriate, do very big hit. Which brings us back to the opener. Because of how Inner Chaos works, we're going to be slotting it into the opener in a very specific way that abuses the Inner Release timer. Pre-pull, defines if relevant. Tomahawk, Infuriate, Heavy Swing, Maim, Storm's Eye, Inner Release, Inner Chaos, Upheaval, Onslaught, Fell Cleave, Infuriate, Inner Chaos, Onslaught, Fell Cleave, Fell Cleave. Everything is the same up to Inner Release, but remember, Inner Chaos does not spend a stack. So starting with it means we still have three uses of Inner Release. We'll spend it, start the cooldown of Upheaval and Onslaught, then use a Fell Cleave. With this Weave window, we will use Infuriate to get our second Inner Chaos to immediately use it. Then we just spend what we have left. There really isn't that much thought into it beyond what I just said. Any and all thought is mostly reserved for level 90. We're not going to karaoke open to this one because the level 90 opener is the same roughly with the one or two additions. So let's get moving on towards it, with the Endwalker Toolkit rounding out Warrior's Insanity. Level 82, Raw Intuition Mastery and Blood Wedding. Hey, remember how Raw Intuition was strong? This is a buff to it. Why? Because Warrior. Blood Wedding is now 8 seconds of 10% reduced damage and 400 potency of healing. Two more seconds, which actually does matter. But wait, there's more! Now we also get four seconds of Stem the Flow, a second 10% damage reduction. Now, because this is two different buffs, it's not a 20% buff, but a 19% damage reduction in total, diminishing returns on stacked mitigation. But for those four seconds, that extra mitigation can really help reduce a tank buster's threat. And then we're still not done. Stem the Tide lasts for 20 seconds, giving yourself an automatic shield worth 400 potency of healing. That's as much as a single attack heals you in Blood Wedding, but as shield HP, so no fear of overcapping and wasting the effect. It will likely only reduce one auto attack from a boss worth of damage, but during a tank buster, that's nice safety. But it gets better still. Level 82, Enhanced Nation Flash. That's right! Nation Flash gives you and an ally 8 seconds of healing from your attacks, while that ally gets 4 seconds of Stem the Flow, the base 10% mitigation, and the 20 second 400 potency shield. They still share a cooldown, but that's the only reason that this isn't incredibly just broken in raiding. Imagine if you could Blood Wedding and Nation Flash at once. 800 potency of healing while both tanks have mitigation? Dual tank busters would be sickening. Level 84, Enhanced Equilibrium. Equilibrium wasn't enough healing. So weak. Only 1200 potency? Well, now it has a heal over time or hot. This heal over time is 15 seconds long, carrying 200 potency. It works on the server tick, so it heals every 3 seconds. In total, that is 5 ticks, or an extra 1000 potency. So let's take the Tank Buster example. You take a big hit, are at less than half your health now, equilibrium for about a quarter of your health, and the regen will continue to heal you as the boss auto-attacks you. 
or in trash, it's some small but consistent healing for the duration while enemies eat your face with their own consistent damage. Basically, good skill is gooder. Level 84, Melee Mastery. This is the most boring skill and the most poorly worded. Heavy Swing is boosted 50 potency to 200, Maim gets an extra 30 potency to the base potency, and both Storms get 20. These two also actually boost the comboed potencies too. So Maim is 280 potency in a combo, and both Storm attacks are 400 potency each. Power up? Not actual usage thinking. Level 86, Orogeny. This shares the same 30 second cooldown as Upheaval. It does a 5 yom AoE around yourself, doing 150 potency of damage to all enemies hit. It is stronger than Upheaval on 3 or more enemies, so the normal AoE threshold. That really is all there is to it though, it's an AoE Upheaval. Use it as much as you can. Level 88, Enhanced Onslaught. This is even more simple to explain. We now have three stacks of Onslaught at max. You can now safely always use two stacks and keep a third for any knockbacks or downtime. If no such situations occur, just use them all where you can and reopen as if possible. Level 90, Primal Rend. Inner Release is buffed to now also grant us Primal Rend ready for 30 seconds. This allows for a single use of Primal Rend. This is a gap closer to any enemy within 20 yams of you. It has a lengthy animation lock, taking up an entire weave window so you cannot double weave after Primal Rend. Further, this is an AoE. The target will take a massive 700 potency of damage. All enemies within 5 yams of the initial target take 210 potency of damage. AKA, this skill hurts. In AoE or single target situations, you want to get this out for big, big, big damage. Oh, which, it is a guaranteed critical direct hit still, without spending gauge or one of your three inner release stacks. Anytime you use inner release, you're using this. And normally it will be from a point blank range, but that gap closing effect can be accidentally super useful. You're gonna use it though, no contest. Which... This and that third stack of Onslaught are the two additions to our final opener. Mostly Primal Ren though, as that actually gives us something additional at the very end. We'll see it in action as we go through it, but you'll immediately notice the opener is a bit longer than before. Pre-pull, Defiance if relevant. Tomahawk, Infuriate, Heavy Swing, Maim, Storm's Eye, Inner Release, Inner Chaos, Upheaval, Onslaught, Primal Rend, Infuriate, Inner Chaos, Onslaught, Felcleave, Onslaught, Felcleave, Felcleave, Heavy Swing, Maim, Storm's Path, Felcleave, Infuriate, Inner Chaos. So same as we start as always, Tomahawk, Infuriate, then pop in release after a combo. Spend our inner chaos into the double weave. Rather than a fell cleave, immediately throw out our primal rend. By this point, all party buffs will be up, so perfect time for it. And since we only have a single weave window after primal rend, Infuriate can go out for our second inner chaos. Now we can finally spend all three fell cleaves, throwing out our leftover onslaughts, but then at the end, we add in a full Storm's Path combo. This will get us to 50 Beast Gauge exactly for a final Fell Cleave. Just in time for Infuriate to only have 5 seconds left on the cooldown. That final Fell Cleave makes 0 and gives us one final use. That is how significant the Time Saver function is. But other than abusing the full 15 second timer for earlier inner release and that finer inner chaos, not much thought is into Warrior's opener which makes it simple for a player to understand, and makes it simple for us to karaoke it. So let's sing some deathcore. Pre-pull, defiance, if relevant. Tomahawk, infuriate. Heavy swing. Maim. Storm's eye, in release. Inner chaos, upheaval, onslaught. Primal rend, infuriate. Inner chaos, onslaught. Fell cleave, onslaught. Fell cleave. Fell cleave. Heavy swing. Maim. 
Storm's Path, Felcleave, Infuriate, Inner Chaos. That is how angry we get and how strong we are, especially in dungeons. There is some thought to put in with proper cooldown usage, but Warrior is by far the comfiest to play of the tanks. Benediction go! Thank you for watching this Warrior 1-90 leveling skills guide. Feel free to give feedback or ask questions on what might still be confusing to you. I am always seeking to improve, as should you. Don't stop with this guide, even if I succeeded in helping you improve. Please leave a rating, comment, sub, those really do help creators. Or even go follow my Patreon. Have fun in your adventures across Eorzea, and may the power of Ananid Hogsley waste to your enemies.